Let's look at the different ways items can become charged through electrostatics. We know that like repels, opposite attracts, but what about objects that are charged but are attracted to neutral objects? The neutral object gets polarized, which makes the near side of the neutral object appear oppositely charged, which will attract the charged object. A negatively charged balloon is a great example. There are some positive charges, but primarily negative charges in the balloon. The hand, or if you wanted to stick it to a wall, is neutral. It has equal positive, equal negative. When the negative balloon is moved over to the neutral wall, all the negative charges move away. They're repelled like charges repel. All the positive charges stay in place. So now the outer layer of that hand is positively charged, so it's attracted to the negatively charged balloon. There are three methods of charging electrostatics. Friction, conduction, and induction. Charging by friction you're pretty familiar with. This is when two objects come in contact and slide or move past each other. One material wants to give off electrons to make the other object negatively charged, and that other object wants to take those electrons and become negatively charged. Common examples here are scuffing your feet on the carpet and then walking up behind someone to shock them. This is when you slide out of your car seat and you feel a shock. Common materials like fern hair give electrons off. This is why the comb attracts paper strips. And silk likes to take electrons. So fur and hair will make things negatively charged. Silk can make things positively charged by taking away those electrons. Conduction is when things come in contact. This is the physical touching of a charged object to another object. The electrons flow from a high concentration to a low concentration. We saw this in our electrostatics video lesson. When they touch, the high concentration goes to the low concentration. Here's a quick example on an electroscope. The electrons went from the stick to the electroscope, making the electroscope negative. Because we made contact, the electrons were able to conduct through the electroscope. The object gets the same charge as the stick, so now both inner parts are negative. That's why the electroscope moves. Diagram this electroscope if the charges were positive. With conduction, we take the same charge, so the electroscope would be charged positively because the stick would have been positively charged. And the electrons from the electroscope would go into the stick. The only charge that moves is the electron, the negatively charged particle. The electroscope would lose electrons, making it positive. So this is why the electroscope moves again, because both parts inside are the same charge. The third method of charging is induction. This involves polarization and grounding. We've already explored polarization where you make a neutral material appear that it has a layer of positive and negative. So polarization, the rearranging of the charges in a neutral object. The net charge is still neutral, but the charges have rearranged themselves due to the presence of a charged object. This is the negative charges in your hand moving away from the negatively charged balloon. And then grounding gives those electrons a path. Now that we have them all far away from the balloon, we can ground them and attach the object to the earth where the electrons are free to enter and exit. This is what lightning is. Lightning has a buildup of negative charges in the sky or the ground, and then there's a free exchange of electrons between the sky and ground.